It's Sunday night, 9 o'clock. Welcome to All Across Live. I'm Gary Groob in Toronto, and with me as always, I have Sean Slat over at Moose Jaw. Sean, how are you? Doing pretty good, thanks, Gary. And I have Muffler Mike over in Connecticut. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing good. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to Happy everybody. Easter, yeah. Oh, wait, we have props, baby. We have props. <laughs> as always, you know, there's graphics. There you go. Uh, yep. Happy Easter. I'm my chocolate Easter bunny. <laughs> But uh, not a crazy week, guys, but uh, a lot of different things going on. A lot of behind-the-scenes things going on. Um, a lot of questions to be answered going forward with some. And uh, another clinch. So we got plenty of things to go. But first, let's get the ball rolling, shall we? Sorry, I just love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just before we get rolling, just for the network, remember that all shows are streamed live across Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch. And you can catch all the action on EOPSports.com. Remember to hit the subscribe, follow, and like buttons, and always share. Please enjoy our affiliates. As you can see, there are many shows on many days and more coming all the time. Um, now that baseball season's going, there's a lot of baseball going on as well. And, of course, Steel Steps and with WrestleMania up next week, they're going to be very busy with that. And I'm sure Pat will have a few words to say about that since he's part of that show. Um, missed a show? No worries. You can grab all the podcasts and all the major podcasting companies, which include Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, and so much more. You can also catch the uh, all the shows on the EOP YouTube page at EOP Sports. Or if you're looking for our stuff in particular, all across all the time on YouTube, and you can catch retro games, you can catch interviews, you can catch our live uh, shows, our entire library, as well as many other things, press conferences, etc. So please uh, give that one a look. Remember to stay up to date with all sports by visiting eopsports.com with great articles from our huge staff of contributors. While you're there, please subscribe to our newsletter. A few, uh, few things to remember, upcoming next week, <clears throat> is the uh, Bats Third Invitational uh, over at the uh, Blue Cross Arena in Rochester. Doors open at 12.30. Face-off is in at 1. Uh, the Laxney uh, North American Invitational Champions against the Rochester Bats this time around. Uh, see the Rochester Bats Instagram page for more ticket information. Admission is free with a ticket to the Nighthawks versus Riptide game. Also, and this is coming up a lot faster <clears throat> than we think, over in July, the 6th to be exact, uh, is the third annual McDougal fundraiser. Uh, the Junior A game is 3 p.m. The Celebrity game, which you do not want to miss, is at 6 p.m. A lot of fun to have by all. Uh, unbelievable the names that are in the Celebrity game. There's also a silent auction that goes from 4 to 10. Beer Garden, live music. This is the place you want to be. I think admission is like 10 bucks. It's nothing for everything that's going to go on in there. So by all means, uh, please keep that in mind. Put that in your calendars. If you're anywhere in the Ontario area and can get to the Rock facility, by all means, state-of-the-art facility as well. I uh, found a picture down in yesteryear, guys. I uh, keep mentioning that um, I have a connection um, and uh, kind of live vicariously through Josh Dalwick uh, doing great, uh, as he has, has been for the last couple of years with the Toronto Rock. And uh, this little thing popped up on my, uh, my memories from about nine or ten years ago. A young Josh Dalwick over in the crowd with a guy who's pretending to be Mick Foley. <laughs> <laughs> if I was missing an ear, I think that would be just about right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that goes back a long way. So uh, from where he was sitting beside us to now us cheering for him uh, is a lot of fun. And his one brother's already been drafted. His other brother's uh, going to be joining up junior soon. So uh, pretty soon it'll be like the Stastny's. It'll be Dalwick from Dalwick and Dalwick <laughs> over in Rockland, Rock City to be exact. So uh, just one bit of news. Um, the Shamrocks signed their goalies. Uh, one's interesting. Chris Riglieri, I believe, signed with Owen Sound or was drafted by Owen Sound in the very first pick of this last MSL draft. So I'm not quite sure how that works. We'll have to look into that. And Cam Dunber Dunkerley. So they've got a pretty good tandem there. For summertime over in Victoria, um, maybe time to dig out the old uh, 
Shamrock's jersey again and <laughs> dust it off and uh, take out some of the – maybe dry clean it, take out some of the tears from last year. <laughs> last couple <Yeah>. of years. <laughs> well, the last couple of years, yes. But last year in particular, you know, when everybody kept telling me it was a rebuild, it wasn't rebuilding. Um, you know, that and my Atlas jersey can uh, go for a dry clean to get the tears out of them. <laughs> I believe the Jeff Teed autograph is now getting a little blurry from all the, uh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a, been a sad kind of tease. <laughs> Looking for a little bit more joy over in the summertime this year. Um, just a couple of, a uh, couple of things. The arena lacrosse league. Um, the only one going still uh, is the uh, East. And that was this weekend's championship weekend. The West actually had their championship uh, a couple of days ago. And congratulations to the Blackfish who beat the Eagles 16 to 11 and are your West champions. The East, uh, I spent my weekend over a track uh, covering these games. And I'm telling you, we had some wow games. The uh, first was the uh, Toronto Monarchs against the Whippy Steelhawks. And 13-12 was your final. It was 1-1 after one quarter, guys. 1-1. Wow. Man. The goaltending was phenomenal. This was a track meet, two really, really quick teams and two high-powered offenses, but the goaltending was sensational. Craig Wendy and Caleb Martin both looked incredible in this. Um, as the game wore on a little bit, you had a little bit more scoring. Uh, it was 5-4 for the Monarchs at the half. Um, it was tied 8-8 um, after three. And in the fourth, we were 12-12. Heading to, we're already talking about overtime, uh, into the uh, the dying seconds with 49 seconds left in the game. Curtis Conley, a name that's near and dear to all of us here, uh, scored the game winner. Pretty goal, too. Not a sheepy. And uh, you had your uh, Whippy Steelhawks making it to the finals. You know, it's funny because, you know, it had been an upset, yes, that Whippy went 13-1 and during the year. Uh, only loss was to Oshawa, but um, that uh, if they would have lost, but yet uh, the Monarchs by no means are an underdog in this, and uh, they've been holding their weight all season long, and uh, this was a hell of a game. And Parker Pfeiffer was simply amazing for Toronto. And for Whitby, of course, Liam Osborne is every every bit as good as what the, uh, what the press clippings say about him. He is everywhere. Offense, defense, doesn't matter. Uh, Parker Pfeiffer wound up with eight points in that game. Um, Liam Osborne had three goals in that game. Brent, uh, Trent Boyd with a goal and four assists. Uh, Devin Pfeiffer, his brother, um, had three assists. And Colton Lidstone, two goals and an assist. Just an all-round amazing game. And what a way to kick off the uh, the semifinals with a, uh, a slam bammer like that one. Just an absolute gem of a game. The, uh, the late game had the uh, Oshawa Outlaws facing the Brampton Express, and both teams had um, really, really great years. Uh, a few games off here and there, but uh, overall, fantastic years. But um, the Oshawa Outlaws, <clears throat> they just weren't going to be denied. They had walloped the Six Nations Snipers 23-9 uh, to nine the week earlier, and in this game, they wound up winning 19-14, uh, to 14, but... Um, uh, believe me when I tell you the score is a lot closer than what the game was. A couple of late goals made this thing look a lot closer than it was. John St. John had just an absolute incredible game. Three goals, 10 assists, was the number one star. Uh, Jake McNabb had six goals for Brampton, was the number two star. Alex Simons was uh, the number three star, had four goals and an assist for Oshawa. Again, the goaltending in this game uh, for uh, – for Oshawa especially, Jackson Brown looked fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, for Brampton, um, sorry. For Brampton, uh, it was uh, Lucas Nagy who uh, had the majority of it. Cole Martin came in for a little bit at the end. But um, um, a little rougher of a day, but, uh, you know, it was a great, great game. Two great teams. And, uh, man, it was a rough game. It, this one was a, a slobber knocker, so to speak. So you had um, this afternoon the Oshawa Outlaws facing the Whippy Steelhawks uh, for all the marbles. And, uh, man, 
You know, we we're just uh, we we're saying in the practice pre- box before the game, really doesn't matter who wins. Just looking for a uh, a good game, and that's exactly what we got. Was it just a spectacular game with lead changes continual? Um, there was uh, no bigger than a two goal lead in the first half, uh, which finished eight uh, six for the Steel Hawks. Um, but uh, by the fourth quarter, the beginning of the fourth quarter, we had a 10-10 tie, five minutes in. So with 10 minutes to go, we're tied 10-10. Just spectacular. And this was a track meet. Back, forth, up, down, shots galore, lots of great plays. But again, Jackson Brown, Caleb Martin, uh, obviously the right choices from the coaches to be in net because they both were sensational. So much so that two of the three stars were them. Uh, The number one star was Liam Osborne. I'll get to him in a minute. Um, Whitby put together a three-goal run uh, in the last six minutes of the game uh, to get up uh, 13 to 10. Um, Oshawa tried to fight back. Uh, They made it 14-12, scoring their last goal with two seconds left, but it was a little too little too late. And the Whitby Steelhawks, are your champions for 2023-2024. A uh, good picture of the uh, the captains with uh, John St. John, or sorry, with Paul St. John, the uh, commissioner and owner. And the MVP was Liam Osborne. Just a spectacular game he had. He was literally everywhere. And um, you can't sing his praises enough. Um he had five goals, one assist in this game. The other one that stood out for me was Colton Lidstone. He only had one goal, but he had seven assists on the Whitby squad. Uh, for Oshawa, Gareth Hay brought it. My God, did he have a game. Four goals, four assists. John St. John with a goal, four assists. Josh Gilray with some incredible crease dive goals. Um, three goals, one assist. Alex Simons, two goals and two assists. But it was just an absolute spectacular game. Um, the crowd went nuts, um, divided, of course. But both from Durham region, two teams out there just showing their uh, their moxie. And I'm telling you guys, um, the Arena Lacrosse League looks to be expanding. <clears throat> it is that uh, that much of a big deal, and um, they are sensational. And the teams that have these guys drafted, uh, well, uh, they're. Uh, having a lot of really great players going to head to their rosters in a short time. Parker Pfeiffer with um, Colorado, uh, that's a steal. That's an absolute steal. He's going to be a star there for years if he can stay healthy. The other one that stood out to me was um, um, Luke Keenan, uh, who played today uh, uh, for uh, Whitby. Uh, He uh, was placed on the active roster for Georgia the other day. So um, expect the swarm to uh, get a little bit of a, a little bit of a shot of adrenaline, shall we say. But just a spectacular weekend. Done to the nines by the ALL. Uh, I have a whole uh, mass of pictures from those games, uh, as well as I have the, uh, the recap up on our sites uh, from today's game. Uh, lots of great stuff. Even the uh, champion celebration. So... Great stuff, eh, guys? Awesome. Yeah, Another year of ALL in the books. Uh, they were talking about even starting earlier next year, and that all depends on um, expansion and where they're going and how they're doing it. So a little too early to tell now, just at the end of the year. But that was the rumblings on the wall. And I got to say, the line of the weekend came from Lance when he was doing the, uh, the play-by-play. And he was talking about, I believe, John St. John. And he's known as the facilitator and the feeder. And uh, he usually has, you know, 15 assists if there's 18 goals in a game. And, you know, his line was simply, he should be working for UNICEF because he's feeding the world. <laughs> That's a good one. That brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. That's, yeah. Yeah, it stopped me right where I was at. I was actually standing beside him in the, uh, in the loft there in the press uh, gallery. And uh, I just stopped and looked. That was <laughs> That was just awesome. Anyways, let's move over to some, um, well, milestones. Uh, First off is the Albany Firewolves uh, 
through no help of their own, uh, clinched. But they are now the third team to clinch a playoff spot. Uh, this would have come anyways this week, but uh, I'm sure. But uh, it's in the books. So now I'm curious the game I'm going to next week in Albany. Um, this could be uh, the practice squads playing each other. Really. Don't want to hurt anybody, do we? True. Yeah. A few milestones. Um, Teddy Corringly with his 300th Bandit game as their equipment manager. Pretty amazing. That's a long time, guys. Yeah. Long time to be with the team. Mm-hmm. Ryan Banesh, <clears throat> he surpasses Dan Dawson for fourth all-time in NLL history in goals with 552 career goals. Kevin Crowley has hit the 500 assist mark. That's spectacular. And uh, Ryan Dilks with 300 caused turnovers. Now, my guest on the other show this week was Kyle Rubish, who was the caused turnover king, and is still ahead of him by about 130 or so. Uh, amazing just to see those kind of numbers where, yeah. you know, you're talking about two or three, maybe five cause turnovers in a game. Just to see the sheer amplified number of that is just astounding in my eyes. Uh, um, a little bit out of date because this was from last week's game and uh, Withers had another game this week to uh, bolster it. But uh, he uh, passed a single season record for loose balls, which at that point was 249 probably around 280 now knowing him <laughs> and uh, that about takes care of all the milestones for the week um while we're uh waiting for our wings nest to uh to begin uh <laughs> let's take a look at our pickums shall we it's a good week for most of us most of us yeah <laughs> <sighs> it's, over 500, it's a sign of things to come yeah yeah but um, this puts us in around just over 60% for all of us for the year. So not bad, guys. Not bad. I wouldn't uh, be betting my mortgage on it, but uh, hey, yeah, six out of 10 is not bad. Pretty good. Yep. In baseball, if you get three out of 10, they put you in a Hall of Fame. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to some of these NLL games. Um, why don't we get to the ones that aren't with Philadelphia first uh, and wait for... Pat, who should be joining us anytime. And if he didn't, then we'll go ahead with him. But uh, the first game I want to go to is Rochester and Halifax. So basically, it's Rochester old versus Rochester new. Uh, Jameson and Thieb each uh, net hat tricks to lead the Thunderbirds to a big road win. Banesh moves the fourth all time in the goals list, as we've already discussed. Why don't we take a look at the um, highlights and then we'll uh, come back with the game? Barring a power play goal by the Thunderbirds. Here comes Smith driving in. He shoots and misses. Follows up. He scores! Trade away John Grant Jr., which people went nuts over. <laughs> and said, you crazy? You're, you're getting rid of John Grant Jr. for Cody Jamison? And Dawson Thede buries one with 7.1 to go. Fields still has it. Backing his way in. Driving, still has it, scores! There's no stopping number 10. Lanchbury, McConvey, shooting, he scores! Ball hunter near side. Gives it to Jamison as the two cousins hooking up for a goal as Jamison buries it. Now he threw a shot. He's in and out of the stick of Curtis Knight. Rolled yeah. on over. Here comes Fields. Shooting, he scores! Banesh to Peterson. Shanks gives it across to Thede. Now Banesh up top. Shooting, he scores! Ryan Banesh is now tied with Dan Dawson for fourth all-time. And flips it over to Thede, who gives it up top now to Banesh. To Thede. Shooting, he scores! He went low on Hutchcraft. It's Colorado, after having a really productive first half, like they did tonight. And that shot by Peterson gets past Hutchcraft, and it's 8-6. Some opportunities to pass off, but opted to take the shot, and he had a good looking shot, but Warren Hill turned it away. And Peterson comes back and buries it for the Thunderbirds. 
And I'm sure Turner Evans is glad to finally get that elusive goal he's been waiting for. And that shot by Jamison goes by Buckin. It's 10-7. To Woods. Woods eyeing up the defense. Gets free. Shooting, he scores. Hill so far tonight. Fed over and out of fields. To Lanchbury, down low, the shot, he scores! As Smith buries it. Jameson gives it near side to Thede. Thede down low, Banesh scores! Ryan Banesh has now passed Dan Dawson for fourth all-time in goals in NLL history. And there you go. Found it funny that they're talking about John, they're going nuts over uh, trading John Grant for Cody Jameson. I happen to have a uh, John Grant's all-star uh, <laughs> all jersey on uh, awesome. <laughs> from 2008 over in Edmonton. Um, just a comment from uh, Ryan McMichael. Hit her home quick. Yeah. Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't have any celebrations or any other things to do, so uh, off I went. Congratulations on a great season, Ryan. Oshawa looked great today. And couple of bounces one way or the other, and uh, we're talking about the, the great Oshawa win. Uh, by the way, both teams were vying to be the first team in the Arena Lacrosse League to win a second championship. Both had won one to this point. Huh? So Whitby is the first one in ALL history to uh, to win two. So, And I'm sure Oshawa is salivating to get back at it and uh, um, go for it for the next season. And if they can keep the team together, and uh, a lot of them will be there, there again, uh, they're going to be a viable uh, force. Anyways, let's get on to the uh, the Halifax-Rochester game. 6-6 um, six, six at the half. And only one team really came out in the second half. Yeah, yeah, Rochester struggled. You know, they, they, they allowed, you know, Halifax to – kind of have their way, especially on the power play. And uh, uh, one of the things that stands out to me, Halifax took just 43 shots for the game. So they were nearly yeah. shooting at a, you know, 30-ish percent clip <laughs> efficiency. So um, that's that's a little tough to swallow <laughs> if, if you're Rochester, you know, especially since, you know. Well, they even, they even pulled Riley Hutchcraft, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 Doug Buchan. You know, played uh, over played a, a small, small, yeah, it's played played a small chunk of time, and uh, I think he uh, allowed three goals on ten yeah. shots. So, yeah, that's right. But he played uh, he played twenty minutes, nineteen thirty to be exact. Yeah. So um, he uh, he played a third of the game. So yeah. I don't I don't know. Like it's uh, it's hit and miss over there. But I don't think that uh, giving up twelve goals is like the uh, the end of the world. It's a firepower team that can only score nine is where my head is uh, a little bit uh, woozy. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, you know, that's one of the concern. Yeah. Yeah. A week after scoring seven against Colorado, you know, and. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, two bad weeks after absolutely obliterating teams for the last couple of weeks beforehand. And now all of a sudden they can't, with an on star system, they can't find the net. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, I know the standings. Absolutely. Little, He'll make yeah, some the, huge saves in this game. Uh, but again, I'm just I'm just perplexed a little bit at how south, how quickly the Rochester scoring went. And as quickly as it yeah, goes away yeah, from yeah. that. Yeah, and what's the, the answer? I mean, one of the most inconsistent. Yeah, I don't really have an explanation for that. Yeah. You know, um, you know, one one thing I was gonna say, just standings wise, uh, if you look at the website right now, uh it, it shows I think it shows Rochester in 11th, but really, I mean, they're tied with Calgary and Saskatchewan. They're all six and eight, but uh, really, I think uh, Rochester should technically be in ninth place right now because they did beat Calgary and they did beat Saskatchewan right. earlier in the year. Yeah. So, um, of course, I'm sure it'll sort itself out. Yeah. yeah well, you know, I, I think that's just it. It'll probably sort itself out next weekend when Calgary and Saskatchewan have their double header. So, well, yeah. That'll, that'll do it. But, um, yeah, it's just, um, again, I just, I can't figure it out. And I can't blame the goaltending on this one, even though he's the one who got pulled. Um, that's not the reason. 
So no, I, I don't know. I'm just looking at Ryan, someone like Ryan Ryan Lanchberry. Are you maybe looking for a little bit more production out of a guy like him with only one goal and three assists? And I mean, I I, I mean, you could go across the board, right? But um, yeah, well, yeah. Exactly. yeah first night only had a goal. Thomas yeah. McCoffey, who's been lighting it up all year, I had a pair of goals. Ryan Smith, who was your go-to, only had two goals. You know, yeah, there's field. nobody on in the that's lineup who got more than two goals. Thing. You really could go across the board and say, yeah. You know, Kyle Waters, for a big guy, was almost invisible last night. Well, that's the problem. That firepower is there, so I don't know what the answer is either. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because it seems uh, they go at, you know, they feed off each other both ways. If they're slumping, all of them are slumping. If they're all going great, all of them are going great. Uh, that's not a good scenario to have in the playoffs because if you have one of those off nights, you get another one of those Buffalo performances, which uh, I remember sitting through that one in Buffalo and wow. You know, let alone the rock ones, but wow. Yeah. It's like the tap got turned off. And at that time they still had uh, Rylan Hartley in that, right? And they just, they took him to school. Yeah, oh. and uh, and it doesn't. Can't say it gets too much easier for them. They have uh, they're home against New York uh, this week, then they're at Toronto week twenty, and then they have a double header week twenty one. Oh. That's um, nasty, at, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. Terrible. They're, they're they're the last one um, at Georgia, and then home against Philly. So. Well, we'll get to the Philly problems in a few minutes, but. Uh... <laughs> Maybe they've righted the ship at that point. <laughs> Anything's possible. I've seen so much inconsistency that uh, this has been the. Uh, it's funny because we we're talking about the Beckhams earlier. This has been the most difficult year that I think I've had. Oh yeah. In picking, doing Pickums, yeah, yeah, doing Pickums, oh, yeah. doing online stuff and anything else because there's everybody has been, with the exception of Toronto and San Diego, uh, everybody has been just too inconsistent for me to yeah. uh, actually, you know, you know, roll the dice and let it ride. Yeah. And I, I, I want to say, I mean, it's, it's it almost kind of went under the radar. Um, had Rochester won this game, that would have been Halifax's fifth straight loss. They were eight and three. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. they had lost four straight games coming into this matchup. So, and there's you know, another team with all this fire. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I picked Rochester to win, and you know, and I, I was prepared, you know, for the possibility of coming in tonight going, what's going on with Halifax now, <laughs> you know? But I don't think they're out of the woods yet. You know, yes, they're celebrating. They had 12 goals, they have enough firepower to put up 18 oh, on yeah. any day. The Rocks shut them down under 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 eight, and they, they completely stopped in the second half. Yeah, here, um. Rochester obviously was having some problems, and they didn't run run the uh, run the gauntlet on them. So, yeah, and and they don't exactly have gimmies either, you know. Uh, the rest of the way, um, uh, next week, next week they're at Vancouver, which I mean that's, you know, you talk about travel. <laughs> it's going to be probably their farthest travel, and plus this Vancouver is probably the best is, Vancouver's been playing. Yeah. Yep. Yep, so so they're running into a red hot Vancouver team and then they finish at home against Colorado and we saw what Colorado did to Rochester. Yeah. So yeah. you know, when everyone kind of expected backs, they all of us picked Rochester win that game last week against Colorado. So Well, I was prepared to put Colorado on a losing thing the rest of the season after they made their trades. Oh well, yeah. It looked like they I were, thought they were uh, I thought dumb. they were selling, yeah. <laughs> yep. So and uh, they proved us wrong again. Inconsistency again. Uh, welcome to my point on you just can't pick them without a coin. Yeah. This year. But uh, anyways, let's move on. Uh, we're talking about Vancouver, and uh, lo and behold, Vancouver is the next game. And ball stays hot with four goals, five assists to lead the Warriors to their third straight win. And that's big. That's big because uh, yeah. looking at Vancouver over the last couple of years, I don't know if they've strung together three victories in a row in any of these years. So three and four of the last five, too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, look out! They're uh, knocking to try and uh, make some noise come uh, playoff time, but uh, it's a long road. Yeah, and they're only you know um, we just talked about 
Calgary, Saskatchewan, Rochester, all at six and eight. They're six and nine now. So they're only a half game back. And we're talking ninth, 10th, 11th at the 12th place. So just outside yeah. of the playoff spot. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty insane. It reminds me of a, of a couple of years back <clears throat> when, um, even in a divisional thing, when nothing was set until the, the very last game uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, and yeah, that, that, that East division. Divisions, but uh, <laughs> that was, East division at the time East was, division was and nothing. Cool. You could have been fourth or first, depending on on what happened in that last week. So it was bizarre. Anyways, let's just have a look at the highlights, and then we'll come back. He was a little dinged up in practice, and unfortunately unable to go here tonight. Long bomb, Connor cursed in transition. He scores. Along with Reed Bowering. Yeah, there's the the third headed monster of that young decor is Look Keegan Ball. Ball scores for Vancouver on the backside. Yeah, we'll get back to Bowering. That was after watching five replays. That was a nuts shot right there. That thing hit every piece oh, of. And of course, that one goes in for Greer. A why not attempt? For Remember last year in Vegas' first ever franchise win. Oh. As Ball bounces one in, short-handed goal for Keegan Ball. And King has been inactive, you know, for the season, grieving and mourning her loss. And it's so great to see King back, and he scores! Marshall King! It's on this man advantage that now has just under three minutes to go in it. Jackson, weaving back and forth, and he sneaks it in! Uh, he just, uh, he was out guessing Aiden Walsh the entire time a couple of weeks ago as Charlem Beatty's answers for the Warriors. For the moment, two on nothing. Now Vegas trying to race back out there. Jackson recovers just in time. Grant turning and scoring. Owen Grant with his league best. Former captain. 25 years old. He was taken second overall in the 2020 draft. As Ball snipes another. Oh, that almost knocked you over that sniper. It, it is heated up along with the rest of this Vancouver team. Winners of three of their last four. And another one poured in. Charlotte Beatties takes one this time. And this is one of those runs. It's been a good thing for Willman just to focus on playing good defense. He took the lion's share of the faceoffs earlier. His ball catch and shoot. It is nylon for Keegan Ball. He's up to a six-point day. It was a reset there. Back to Charlotte Beatties. He misses upstairs again. One more chance, and it was too many. Crowley scores finally for Vancouver. They're looking for their fourth win in five tries. Today as Reinhold picks it off. And look who's ahead of the pack. It is cursed. He scores. Another transition goal for Cursed. Some of these offensive options, though, of late have really come on, and one of them is killing. And a three-goal differential still. Charlem Beatties adds on for Vancouver, and he scores his third. Six points now for Adam Charlem Beatties. Well, um, fairly even game if you take out the second quarter. Yeah, um, this is Egan the Ball and, uh, great. Egan Ball and Adam Charlem Beatties go wild. Uh, cover five of the seven goals, and uh, this game is, uh, for all intents and purposes, over by the half. And uh, kudos to Vancouver's defense, also Vegas for that matter, but, but yeah. Vancouver held them to really nothing. They never really got moving at any clip. They never got on a run of more than two goals. And again, yeah, I mean, that's the uh, yeah, that's the Milosky effect, right? Yeah, that's right. It's we're seeing that to change in culture, I think. Well, guys are believing, yeah, now they're playing with confidence. We're gonna get to that, that word confidence, uh, when we talk about Philadelphia in a little bit, but um, the uh, the confidence uh, is going in the other direction over in Vancouver, so now they're not afraid to make plays, they're not afraid to get out there. Um, Paul Day said it, and he'll say it in the uh, press conference that we have with him. Um, when a team is not confident, they're afraid to make plays, which means they're not playing. And then 
stupid things happen. And, well, testament to it. But you can also take a look at Vancouver's early season and uh, them being tentative or not doing things or assignments, and you see what happens. Now they're playing with confidence, and their transition game is 100% better. The goaltending is strong because the, the rest of the team has confidence in him, and now their offense is ruling as well. And the guys who are supposed to be scoring are scoring. The guys who are supposed to be leading are leading. You have a number of leaders in there. We were talking about uh, that earlier in the year. With those guys and those names, will the leader step up? Well, it certainly looks like they did. Yeah. That's Mike a great point about the goaltending. Sorry, I was going to say that's Sorry. a great point about the goaltending in Vancouver because, I mean, what a story with Aiden Walsh. I mean, there's a lot of question marks winning the season. Brought in Aaron Bold to be kind of that mentor to him. Figured kind of Aaron Bold was going to be that goaltender and he would just kind of sit back and he's now proven that he can play in this league. He can be that goaltender for them. Yeah. And ironically, Aaron Bold wasn't having the uh, the greatest of seasons and yeah. Walsh has come to his relief and might be saving the Vancouver bacon, so to speak. Yeah. But yeah, getting back to that leadership question, Mike, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think they're they're stepping up. Uh, like you said, all you know, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of big name guys, and uh, I think it was just a matter of, hey, we 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 need to be mad as hell and not take it anymore. You know, from from the rest of the league, and uh, again, you know, third straight win, four out of their last five, um, six and nine, but you know, I. You know, I, I kind of said it in my pick I said, <laughs> as long as that loss column remains at nine, I think they have a legit shot at the playoffs. Right. Uh, it's not yep. going to be an easy road. Uh, their last three games are, are <laughs> pretty difficult. They're, they're home against Halifax, uh, you know, but but again, that's, that's not a gimme for Halifax. Uh, then they're home against New York, who, you know, right now is – teetering in the eighth spot <laughs> and then they finish s- sort of unfortunately at San Diego but you know they've already wrapped up a, a playoff spot uh well if they're going to get still, the playoffs, still an outside shot at the number one right? seed yeah so they're gonna have to face these teams if they get into playoffs so no better time than the present to do it true, true. but and again that, that could that pressure. could that could be a matchup where you know Hey, you, you know, you beat San Diego to get in the playoffs. You're the eight seed, and if Toronto slides late in the year, suddenly San Diego's the number one seed, and now you're traveling to San Diego, Diego yeah. traveling week for you know a playoff matchup. So, but also um, the pressure isn't on Vancouver because they're not expected to do anything. The pressure is squarely on Halifax. The pressure is squarely on New York. So yeah. Vancouver can just play their game. Um, they're holding their sticks loose. And just run. Worst thing can happen is you're going to be where people thought you were going to be. And I'm sure that message has been told. Guys, we're not expecting it. Let's make people eat their words. Yep. Guarantee it. And it's just bulletin board um, newspaper clippings, so to speak. And there it is. So-and-so, so-and-so, and -and 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 so-and-so said this. that they Didn't think that you guys have anything. Boom. Show them. Now we got them right where we want them, right? (laughs) Pretty much. Yep. Pretty much. Yeah, and I mean, hey, 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 you know, right now, not the other way around. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, look at two weeks ago against Philly, twenty-one to twelve, and I think um, if I remember correctly, uh, Charlotte Beatty's, I don't believe he even found the back of the net in that game. I think he had yeah. seven assists, but yeah. he had no goals, and yet they put up the offensive output. Right, that they did. So, yeah. uh, you know, maybe maybe that you know. A little bit of that maybe comes with confidence too, you know, knowing that, hey, I've got teammates that can pick me up, that if I'm not having, if I'm not the one finding the back of the net, I've got teammates that I know will and I have confidence in. Well, they're also not going to fold when they're losing, whereas before they might have thought the shoulders slumping or losing. Yeah, it's that winning culture, right? 
Yeah, it's that winning don't. culture we've been talking about. Yeah, that. Um, yeah, the whole they thing. Believe, they no, can win now. Hanging the sticks yeah. against the boards, that kind of stuff. You know. Yeah. Remember Miloski's tirade. Yeah. Yep. Well, from that point on, that could be the uh, the the weather barometer thing that changed. Your catalyst, yeah. Right yep. from that Very point important. on, he went on and laid it all out there for everybody, and bang, that's the direction they went from there. So, you know, method to the madness. I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess Pat is busy with uh, with uh, either the uh, the Phillies or the Union and a different show on the network. So uh, let's get on to some of these Philadelphia games. Uh, first thing was the uh, Saskatchewan game, Sean. Yep. And, of course, this is a game where we thought that Saskatchewan was in trouble because it would be their third game in six nights. Insane. Just yeah, absolutely stupid, insane. But... Yep. Uh, Church's big night, three goals, five assists, leads away as a rush, get a big road win, stay in the playoff hunt. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the rush showed me a lot in that game. Resilience yeah. is a word that comes to mind. Um, I don't know. Uh, they must have a good training staff. Good masseuse. Yeah, no because, kidding. Uh, their legs look pretty good in Philadelphia. And, of course, it's another game where Philadelphia is scoring that magic number of 12. 12. All right, let's have a look at it. Swarm came back and got that win. Here's a chance up front, and we get the game's first goal. It'll go to the rush. It is a one nothing. Skipped out in front. Here's a chance, and that one hit the post. Now it's in. It was the moment before it was signaled, but it's called a good goal. Dude, to try to pick up the pace of their offense. Here's Church with a nifty feed out front, and that is over the line. Initially, that was waved off as a save, but it gets through. Zebnikov, he's got those bright green shoes. And another one for Saskatchewan. Squeaks over the shoulder of Higgins. He just stole that far pipe. Here's a bid from the left side, and that one finds the top corner. Nathaniel Konevsikov. Here for Philadelphia. Right side, it's LeClaire getting it back from McIntosh, and he puts it home. Great effort by Sam LeClaire. Here comes Walter to the net around the corner. He tucks it home. And that is a hat trick for Clark Walter, his third of the evening. Here's Mans on the right side. Mans fires and scores. He finds the top corner. Up top, now it's Church to the net, fires. Where is it? That's in the goal. <laughs> Robert Church. Nobody knows exactly what's going on here. Here in the second half, Saskatchewan's had an answer. Domini skips it off, plays reared and scores. The captain. Well, thing that comes to mind is um, talking about Philadelphia's defense. Um, when they were uh, actually moving, Saskatchewan was using them as screens. When they weren't moving, uh, they were leaving far too much room so Saskatchewan get their arms free to get shots. It's positioning. They just picked it up. Yeah. No, they weren't picking anybody up. Um, you know, most of the time I'm defending Zach Higgins on this show. And uh, this time, I, I really can't on this game. He had 36 shots. He let in 11 goals in just under 40 minutes of play. Um, one in three is going in. That's That can't happen. Yeah. Yep. He's had a couple bad games now. And, again, we see what happens when Higgins has a bad game, plus that porous defense. Yeah, it's not it, a good recipe. It's a disaster. It turns yeah. into a disaster. We'll throw in there that they're not scoring more than 12 goals. And I don't care who you are. Um, you might win some of the games. But um, a lot of these teams, 12 goals, that ain't going to get you a win. Well, that's the disappointing thing. If I was a Wings fan, this one is you're playing a tired Saskatchewan Rush team in a playoff battle with the Saskatchewan Rush team as well. You're having for the right for the picking, and you looked flat. You looked unmotivated. You looked as though you played the three games. Yeah. 
uh, I, I don't want to use the word quit. I, I don't know whether they. I don't think they have. Really, I, don't, I don't think that. Just, I do think that they it, need a uh, maybe a fresh set of eyes, a new idea. They need something. Something needs to be shook up in there because um, they're floundering, and they just are. You can see it in their body language. Is they're up and then they're down. They're not making it all the way to where their assignments are. Somebody needs to go through with them, you know, almost at the point of remedial and sit down and show the basic points of you need to get another two steps out. You need to get in the way of his arms. You need to get here. You need to get out of the way of the shots coming so that your goalie can see it. You know, you also need to make people pay if they're going to get in around the crease. You know, going inside, which I'm screaming all the time till I'm hoarse in Toronto for someone to pay the price and get inside. But, you know, they need to make teams pay if guys want to go inside to make it uncomfortable that teams don't want to go anywhere in there. You know, they had a bruising defense at one point. I don't know where it went. It certainly isn't now. And I can't say that they're in transition because I don't see anything happening from their transition squad, at least not this game. So, I don't know. There's a number of uh, other variables other than, yeah, Paul Day's got to get far. I don't think that's it. That's and again, we've talked about it many, many times. If you're going to get rid of Paul Day now, um, who's stepping in? Nobody. So you're going to have just a what? A cardboard cutout of a former coach? Maybe a cardboard cutout of a, of a you know, Rush? Tony Rush? Yeah. No, I know we haven't talked about it on air, but – Sometimes you need that player to stand up in the locker room, not necessarily a coach. You traded that guy away or let that guy go, and uh, Kevin Crowley. Who yeah, is that we guy now? That before off air, is yes, Crowley was the guy that held that stuff together. Um, who is the guy now? Re- Reardon wears the C, but he hasn't been the same since his injury. And. And is he that guy who's going to stand up in the dressing room? Like, all due respect to Ben McIntosh, great player, but he seems like more of the quieter guy who's not going to really stand up and get those guys fired up, right? Like, <clears throat> so you've lost, yeah. you lost Batiste, you lost Crowley, you lost Rambo, all three guys who would be vocal. That's a big issue. It's a good point, Sean. Yeah. Really good point. The leadership from within needs to be the thing that pulls it together. You know, because the coaches, you can blame them all you want, but they haven't taken a shift in years. You know, they're not the one missing the assignments. They're not the ones screening the goalie. They're not the ones missing the ones they should be getting in net. They need somebody to pull this team together, or they need to, in the offseason, find that character person to put this team together. Well, that's exactly it, right? It's accountability. The coach can keep players accountable for so far. It's those teammates keeping your the other teammates accountable for what they're doing out on the floor, right? Like Paul Day keeps taking bullets for everybody in there. And yeah. I imagine if he drinks water, there's water spurting all over the place, you know, like a cartoon from all the holes he's got, from all the bullets he's he's taken for his team, as a good coach will do. But um, there's only so much that, um, that can be done this way. And like I say, it's – to the players now because a lot of the time and i don't think the word quick comes into this thing but uninterested at times um not confident at times um again a step slower than they should be at times to um uh, you know you're playing some of the great teams you need to be on your game but uh, if you're getting your doors blown off to vancouver you're getting your doors blown off to a tired saskatchewan team um, now you got to look and see where and what. Go back to the remedial X's and O's and build up from there. You know, before you have extravagant plays and extravagant things and all kinds of other things, the basics need to be covered. And if we're missing a piece there, well, what happens when your house is built without a foundation, Mike? <laughs> it crumbles. It crumbles quickly. We're seeing uh, maybe a little bit of uh, cracks in the wall due to that foundation not being so secure. All right, let's move to the second part of this uh, this mess. 
and um, Philadelphia on Saturday played the Buffalo Bandits, which is not an easy task on any given time. But you're playing a team that really is fighting to get their, themselves into the playoffs. Uh, they don't want to be champion out of playoffs next year. And, you know, they still are one of the most dangerous teams in the league, whether they all together at every given point or not. It's a whole different thing. Monster games from Smith, five goals, seven assists, and Byrne, three goals, seven assists. Provo Band is the big road win. Katoni scores four goals in the loss. But again, Philadelphia with 12 goals. Magic number of 12. Let's have a look at some of these highlights, and then we're going to listen to Paul Day um, talk about, uh, well, what went on. Wings are being strategic in their matchups. Alex Pace is on Josh Burns. And that one tucked home from an impossible angle by Josh Byrne. He comes across the crease and... You win, you kind of lose a little bit of an edge. That's might, what might be happening this season with the Bandits. You just are not making that extra play. But the Wings do right there. Mitch Jones, goal! That's a great diving effort by Mitch Jones as he's able to tuck it over the shoulder of Vince. They're all running about 6'5", 230. Paul Dawson is a recent pickup on defense, number six for the Bandits, 6'5", 240. Zach Belter, 6'5", 230. What a goal there by Buchanan as he goes behind the back. Wings need here as they have closed this gap back to just a single goal. Now here's a chance in front and McKay puts it home. Getting behind the Wings defense is featuring the final home game of the year for the Philadelphia Wings. Here is Frazier trying to work his way around a pick. Gets it off to Cloutier, swims through a man and scores! Chris Cloutier! Back, sort of. Now they do. McIntosh had gotten it over to Reza Terrence. He gets it back. Now moving around. Six to shoot. They score! Holden Katoni! Second of the half. And another hat trick. Jones ties up this ball game. It's the little things, is it not, Scott, in this game? Yes. You can be a little superstitious from time to time. Change it up a bit. Here's a quick one down low from Smith, and he puts it home. Dane Smith adding to his totals. His fourth puts the Bandits back up by one. Last three on the road doesn't hurt. Brings them together to see if they can pull it out. Here's Buchanan left alone in front, and he puts it home. Kyle Buchanan, top corner. Before Panther City won it. Smith is always dangerous. He's been the hot hand for Buffalo tonight. Four goals, five assists. And there's another goal. The fifth of the night for Dane Smith, but we've got some uh, discussion here. This may not count. Watch, but boy, does he produce on the Philadelphia board, just like Byrne does. And there's another assist for Smith on a pretty goal by Josh Byrne as he falls to the turf, fires one along the floor, and it gets by Higgins. And there it is. Uh, if you've uh, been wondering if um, Eduardo is with us, uh, he is in St. Augustine. Yeah. I'm watching along on YouTube. <laughs> now, interestingly enough, uh, Mike Bauer came up with a – a suggestion that actually made sense to me. Um, Darius Kilgore. Oh, yes. Yeah. That is a really good suggestion. Yeah. And uh, not far away and uh, available. I know he was doing some scouting for Halifax before, but uh, I'm uh, not sure he's doing that anymore. And uh, I'm sure he would love to get back into the coaching game. That's an excellent, excellent idea. It is, yep. Yeah. But I do agree with you, Gary. At this point, making a change up. There's no point in making a change now. You might as well wait till the end of the season if you're if you are going to do that. Yeah. Exactly what I said as well. Yeah. Yeah, too late for the season, and I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Right now you're gonna have to ride this thing through. Um, but does Dave fire himself for both positions? Or does he fire himself for coach and keep himself as a GM? Which leads to the That's problem true. of then he's looking for a guy that thinks like him. Well, doesn't he already have that there? So true. Um, I'm curious yeah. if uh, if they they go for everything or nothing 
or one. Um, it's going to be very interesting in the offseason over in, over in Philadelphia. But let's get on to this game because you know what? Philadelphia put a better fight in this game than they did in the first one. And uh, 9-9. And then all of a sudden, the Smith and um, Byrne show took over. Yeah, and, and uh, you know the I guess I guess you could say the defensive woes continue. I mean, Buffalo had sixty-seven shots for the game. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, it's if it, <laughs> both goalies were busy. And again, Hagen's yeah. made forty-eight saves. So at this point, how much of the finger can you point at him? He. Yeah. No. He. Uh, yeah. There's no blame on him in this game. But, you know, at one point uh, they brought in Deacon Knott uh, just to run uh, from the empty net thing. And it's interesting. Interesting. But Higgins played the majority of this game and just got peppered. But, you know, also, though, Philadelphia's offense, they got 63 shots on Matt Vince, which is something we haven't seen for in a while. So, you know, you run into a hot Matt Vince – and 12 isn't a bad number, actually. True. Oh, it's interesting. Let's listen to Paul Day and the press conference. And uh, uh, poor Pat. He, he, uh, he, his question got Paul a little emotional. For sure. I mean, I think, you know, early in the season, Albany and New York, different games because we're actually making trades to get enough guys to play, to get enough healthy people to put a jersey on. You know, then San Diego, Halifax, I thought we battled uh, both one goal games and then Calgary, Fort Worth, very similar games. Defense was great and goaltending was excellent. And then Vancouver and Saskatchewan, really disappointed. And I think people should know, like we knew there was different at home and we were in a different hotel this week. Um, you know, we changed our locker room up. We did a lot of things different. They weren't guys were sitting together. We changed everything this weekend to, to see what we could do. Um, the only thing we didn't do that we did once before was, you know, take a bus to a home game. So, uh, and again, the start not great today, but, you know, we, we think uh, the rest of the game, you know, hey, <laughs> it's the best team in the world. Like, I know their record isn't right now, but they're coming off that. So, uh, you know, we're proud of our group recovering from not a great performance the other night to practice great last night fan fest with some great people and then a hard performance today and i think sometimes you know being around sports for a long time people talk about heart and it's more about confidence if you don't have confidence then you can't play fast and you can't um you look like you have no heart and i think our Vancouver game and our Saskatchewan game, a lot of guys, the confidence was down. And I don't know why, because we had such a great performance in Georgia. But if you start second-guessing yourself, it looks like you have no heart. That We have a lot of character in there. Coach, I probably answered everybody's questions. <laughs> all once. For you as a coach. I live in my head. <laughs> what, do, what do you take away um, to kind of learn from a home schedule like this, to put in your back pocket and learn from uh, and kind of, you know, take away the the ups and downs of what this home schedule was and utilize that for this three-game road trip that you guys had to finish up. The yeah. I mean, and the other thing we did different tonight, too, we went with six forwards and 11-D because of the – so it's the first time, and we found – one of the things we found since, you know, obviously face-offs are important, we're winning more of those, but we're only using 9-D guys, and what happens then is our transition game – is limited because some, some guys are double shifting. So we use Tuts and Dom out the front and that, you know, so our transition game was okay tonight, but it, 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 it hasn't been where it was a month ago. So I think from this, I mean, we're flexible. I mean, we've changed so much and we continue to be flexible. And I think you have to be open-minded, home or away, to do different things. And I, you know, I we did that in Rochester. You stayed at a hotel. We lost like six, seven games in a row in 2011 to 2012. We changed hotels. We took a bus. We won three championships. So you need to be able to change. And I'm old, but I like change. I like change. And tonight we changed, and we weren't successful. Um, and at the end of the game, you know, we put Deeks in there to run. Is he a little faster than Higgy and 
one time we didn't want him to run and he ran and obviously scored in the empty net, but it didn't matter. So it's learning for him as well. Paul, 1A at home, is it different? Is the pressure of playing from the Philly crowd different than on the road? Is that, is that going to I don't think it's pressure. I really think it's a, it's a confidence issue of, you know, and I, you know, I have a 13 year old that plays sports. You want to uh, win so bad here, but, <clears throat> but then you're worried about making mistakes. I was athlete, I know that, so let's. <sighs> it's, it's not about pressure, it's about if you don't have the confidence of making a mistake, then you're going to sit back and not play. And that's what I find I found for three games in a row. Not tonight, games before that. So you know <sighs> that room wants to win so bad, but I don't know. It's just it's not pressured, so I think sometimes they want to win so bad for these people and they don't want to make a mistake. That's when you're going to make mistakes if you don't compete. So, sorry. That's a coach under a lot of pressure. He's got the way of the world on his shoulders right now. <clears throat> that he does, and he's trying to protect all of his players, and he's trying to make this a healthy situation and trying to make it work for the fans. And, you know, and to take a look at this game, and he's he's got something there, you know. I would say until about the um, – Halfway point of the fourth quarter, Philadelphia's in this game ready to win this thing because they got Buffalo where they want them. They're down by a goal with uh, with 12 minutes to go in the game. And then Buffalo does what Buffalo has always done. Six goal run and this thing's over. The problem is when you let you – Toronto can talk to you until you're blue in the face about this. It's happened to them twice this year. It happened to them in the playoffs last year. You let Buffalo on a run and it's over. And a little breakdown, a little breakdown. You had a breakdown for about six minutes, and that cost you the game. And by the time the uh, the bleeding stopped, you were basically bled out. And there wasn't enough time to do anything anyway. You know, you're not going to come back, score seven goals in a minute. So, you know, breakdowns. And then a lot of what Paul Day said makes sense. Sorry, yeah. Michael. Yeah, no, I, w I was just going to add, again, uh, one and eight at home, but uh, Halifax overtime loss at home. Panther City overtime loss at home. San Diego one goal game at home. Flip all of those, and now they're four and five at home, and they're eight and seven. And well in a playoff and spot. in a playoff yeah. spot right now. Yeah. So, you know, and that might be – I understand that might be difficult for maybe some of the Philly fan base to, to see or think about, especially in light of how <clears throat> the Vancouver and Saskatchewan games went. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Yeah, I get <laughs> where you're coming from. Same I get that. where you're coming from too, Mike, but at the same time, at the end of the day, those are L's in the – in the no, stand I, phone, I, right? I, 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 I totally get <laughs> yeah. that. But but you know, this this the script could be flipped a bit, you know, and and, <laughs> and you would know as well as anyone, Sean, you know. I mean I mean how how big would it have been, you know, had they taken that overtime win in Buffalo for the rush? Oh, yeah. You know? So <laughs> I don't know how many games rush have lost by one or two <laughs> scores this year and Again, because this is such a young team in Saskatchewan, I mean, I say, like, give it a year or two and those get flipped. I mean, I, the problem I see with Philly is you've got a fairly veteran team behind you. 
yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I find it yeah. almost uh, revealing when he, uh, Paul Day said, I don't know. It's just like he's trying to find answers right now. And I don't know whether he has all the answers because it's kind of – he doesn't play the game. It's the players. So. I yeah, maybe. Um, and yeah, I was, I was just gonna say one. Maybe one thing. Maybe roles. Maybe we're not seeing guys on the offense kind of grow into roles on the wings because I'm noticing with spe- specifically with Saskatchewan, and maybe you could apply it to Vancouver too. Um, you know, we, we talked about Kevin Crowley, you know, being that vocal leader guy. Now he's in a, now he's with a team with a bunch of veteran leadership where he doesn't necessarily need, you know, he knows he's not the only guy yeah. and he doesn't necessarily need to be that guy. But with Saskatchewan, especially on the offense, I think just over the last month, you've seen growth game by game and, Guys like Mike Triolo, Kazevnikov, yep. Dodds, and um, even Clark Walter. Clark, yeah. You know, I would say are are growing and maturing into specific roles in that offense, and maybe that's what Philly's lacking right now on the offensive end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I haven't hobbled about that. Cause <clears throat> when you talk about, you know. Clark Walter, Triolo, uh, Koznikov, um, those are young guys. They're still learning. In Philly, you're talking about Mitch Jones, Joe Rasateris, Ben McIntosh, Tate Katoni, Holden Katoni, Blaze Reardon. These guys are veterans. Yeah. No, it's a good point. Are they at this point in their career, should they be growing or should they know what their role is? True. I'm uh, a couple of things from the bandits that stand out to me because, you know, we're the band is loving here. Um, number one, they got Connor Farrell and he was beaten like a drum. They lost uh, 20 to 14 in faceoffs. Yeah, I did notice that. That, yeah. that certainly is a, a bit concerning. The Panther City loss, he lost the big ones. So that may not be the answer for him. Um, the other thing that stood out a lot was with all the firepower, if you take Smith and uh, Burn out of this, um, it's an L. The other uh, thing, of course, now Stephen Orleman's the backup because Devlin Shanahan's on the holdout list, which doesn't make any sense to me either. Um, does that mean the writing's on the wall for him? And uh, Stephen Orleman will be your new backup or your goalie of the future. Um, that's not the answer in my eyes for Buffalo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe wait. I guess the best thing I'd say with that is is wait another summer, see how Shanahan does, and uh, I mean, I assume he's. I'm I assume he's back, back with, the, with the Nimo again, right? In the summer, yeah. So, but you know, uh, hmm, that that's got me thinking. You know what? That's because, almost interesting. Whether maybe Devil needs to spend maybe a season in ALL, just develop a little bit more. Possibly because who knows if he. Who knows if he's the starter in Nanaimo? Isn't there backup Justin Getty? I believe now? so, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, there's possibility there's possibility he may not be the starter in Nanaimo either. So, which would ooh, that would definitely be telling. Yeah, I mean, what we've shot. seen out of Devlin when he did play when Vince was hurt. Uh, or are they waiting for Evan, Evan Constantinopoulos to – uh? Mature and just holding on. Yeah, but I mean, I guess how's on the that practice any, squad, how's, right? How's so they are watching. Yeah. I mean, I would just ask, how is that any different than, than Shanahan? Or, or, you know, for that matter, you know, Deacon not in Philly. So, you know, I mean, they're, they're pretty much 
well, we know at this point that pretty much rolling the dice on Deacon not, you know, kind of, you know, growing into, yeah, growing, into that, growing, yeah. growing into the next big thing, you know, just, just, I mean, San Diego's rolling the same dice with Chris Irregulieri and right now it's working. Yeah. Unfortunately, both with not and, um, Shanahan, uh, I mean, not in a little bit of a bad situation, unfortunately, but even with Shanahan, when we saw him, when Matt, Matt Vince was hurt, he didn't look great. Hey, Guido. Just back from Philly. Wow. Uh, kind of a rough one for you over yeah. the last couple of days. Uh, we're just talking about that and uh, solutions. Solutions for uh, what ails them. If you have any suggestions, uh, we're all ears. But, uh, yeah, no, I uh, I agree. But uh, there's a number of teams. I remember talking with Craig Wendy about this a couple of weeks ago. And, um, you know, the goaltending situation around the league, once you get through the main starters, isn't great. Yeah. Uh, that will take a playoff team and knock them down to ordinary really quickly. Like Guido uh, chimed in on the uh, weekend. Yep, that pretty much sums it up, I think. Yeah. Still not as bad as the coaching pool situation. <laughs> yeah. I think it's about even, really, because uh, both of them are, uh, you know, thin, wearing. Thin. Yeah. Thin. So it's just uh, we keep talking about um, expansion for the league, but if they don't have enough goalies to do it now at starting goalie, um, uh, that kind of uh, stature, then. Um, uh, what's the point of bringing in more teams if you can't fill the net? Yeah, or the other team will fill it. And you know what? That's a great point. Not to mention expansion level quality of coaches. If you don't have a quality head coach to put into an expansion <laughs> yeah, team. Yeah, you know that 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 is a good point. That's but a, you know, I I I guess I would also counter that with you know maybe in a few. Uh, I think that can turn around quicker in a couple of years. Um. You know, obviously they, you know, I th- I think there's a good coaching candidate, you know, who, who recently stepped down in Halifax and Billy D. Smith, who I think, you know, in, in a year or two, you know, could certainly be a head coach. Um, I, I'd i say give Andrew Suter, who's now the defensive coordinator in Halifax, a few years. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and he could he could move up the coaching ranks. Uh the other, who, who else did I have in mind on this topic? Uh, one who, I don't know, maybe maybe his stock has fallen a bit, but um, Andrew McBride. A couple of years ago, I think he, you know. There, his there was, junior record's actually really good behind the bench, so. You know, there there was talk of him. Yeah. There was talk of him, you know, maybe being the next Calgary head coach instead of Sanderson. So, and uh, I would add Dan McRae. Now, who's right. the yeah, defensive quarter? I, I I would think you know give him a couple of years, and, and so so I I think well, how about this name? Is there, they just need a few. How about this name? And he's the head coach of the Cobra Kodiaks, and works in the same idea as uh, Billy D. Smith, Brandon Francis, and his uh, his lineage now goes with um, Cobra, yes, but also Aquasasni. So he's had a number of years yeah, behind the bench. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, you know, to Guido's point, too, is, uh, like I mentioned before, not uh, many coaches are taking shifts nowadays. And uh, these guys aren't, you know, they aren't doing their assignments. They're not coming out. They're not blocking shots. They're working as screens. You know, that's something we kind of didn't really discuss too is when your defense is struggling like that, it, it does affect your offense because you're gripping that stick a little bit tighter. You're maybe taking more risks where no high risk, less reward, and you're not going to score just because you're you're only going up halfway on the floor so you can run back and be part of that defense. Because you're, yeah, cause you're, and, and you're just pushing it to try to kind of keep up with the, what your defense is doing. True. It's going to be interesting in the next couple of weeks. Um, if Philadelphia has a couple more losses, um, 
they're going to be calling for heads. And I oh, think there are, 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 there Again, it brings up the same question that we're discussing here. You know, okay, so you fire Mike Hayes, and who are you going to get? And we pretty much just went through <laughs> what is a very thin, yeah, you know, yeah, on when the you, surface. And when you do it, it mid season, you're pretty much looking. Pool. And when you do it mid season, you're pretty much looking internally until the off season. So you might as well just ride it out. Yeah, and I mean, a couple more names I would add maybe are recent retirees. Well, I mean. Brody Merrill is active again, but he certainly is someone who who I yeah. could see behind the bench. And Dan Dawson, mm-hmm. yeah. So, but again, they're they're you know you need to put them a year or two behind McBride, McRae, Suter, you know, because We're those guys, because those guys yeah, yeah, because those guys are coaching right now. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, the aren't ready for the head coaching job. Yeah, the expectations yeah. that there, it's it, you know, it's going to be a couple of years before you know they can move up. So, all right, let's leave that there. Um, upcoming, we got a huge week. We had the holiday week here with only four games, <clears throat> but we make up for it this weekend and uh, the next few. Um, we start Friday with Saskatchewan in Calgary, and that's going to be a slobber knocker. Always. Yeah. Uh, Buffalo against Colorado, and once again, uh, if I'm a Bandits fan, I wouldn't sleep on Colorado for some reason. They're not <laughs> nope. done yet. Nope, this is a revenge game too. So That's a revenge yeah. game, and it's in the Loud House. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, they're going to be playing for their home fans. And uh, Dylan Ward still got a couple of good games in them. So this uh, Ward against uh, Vince, another one for the ages. There we go again, yep. Panther City, San Diego in that rematch in which uh, San Diego, in overtime, uh, beat Panther City in Panther City. Uh, I was at the uh, Seals watch party for that one, and uh, nobody too comfortable uh, in that game. And uh, San Diego just hasn't been scoring. And if they have another game where they come up a little dry, Panther City has been. So um, anything's possible there. Another must-win game or must-watch game for – for uh, us fans, uh, Halifax against Vancouver, another one that's uh, not you know a gimme. I would not sleep on that one gimme, day. Not a gimme at all for Halifax. Yeah, not a gimme. Plus they have the travel, so. and uh, Vancouver has no pressure like we talked about. You know nobody's expecting it from them, and they're playing great. Four out of the last five games is wins. They're playing well. Um, they finally are into the Malowski system. Everything is working nicely. Uh, what a great way to test it against a more upper echelon team. Yeah, and they, uh, you know, <laughs> they, uh, you know, I would say working in Halifax's favor is just the fact that they won and they're not coming in on a five-game losing streak. Yeah. So Yeah, it's true. Well, uh, New York goes into Rochester. Um, another interesting one, both teams need this win. Yep. So uh, there won't be a shift off. So this will be another one for the ages. Toronto and Albany, both teams have clinched, but pride and uh, home field advantage throughout the playoffs is what they're playing for there. I'll be at that game. Um, looking forward to it. My first chance to see MVP Arena live and in color. So looking forward to it. Uh, Vegas gets into Georgia. Now, Georgia is riding high. Um, they've had a couple of uh, things, and uh, they just added Keenan into their lineup there. So be curious to see how they use him. That should be yeah, and a, and a yeah. chance to, well, I mean, right now they're the fourth seed, but, you know, a chance to maybe leapfrog Albany if Albany doesn't win. So, yeah, it gives uh, Albany yeah. that much more incentive to win, though. And they're playing yeah. a tough Toronto team who's trying to stay ahead of San Diego, who by all intents and purposes uh, would have won the day before. So um, we'll see how that all plays. Um, we're into uh, Calgary and Saskatchewan uh, part two. And uh, if there wasn't bad blood in the first one, there will be in this one. Oh, and this will be for playoff spot too. So you yeah. know it's going to yeah, be all the marbles back. are on this one. Yeah. So. Yeah, and oh boy, you know if 
if Vancouver pulls out a win against Halifax and Calgary and Sask split, you know, now you're looking at three teams at seven and nine. Well, what's it Evan said earlier this week that there's a potential five teams could tie for eight and ten from what I think is five on down. Yeah. Yeah, like it could no. be a mess. <laughs> now, if there's a game that Philadelphia is uh, primed for the winning, Panther City is in San Diego Friday. They're fly- flying three time zones to be back home to play a team that has been sitting there in their yard probably for two days waiting for them to come home. Um, if Philadelphia can somehow find the uh, the confidence to play strong and players only meeting or something else or teams seem to get together more on the road because they are cooped up together as opposed to at home where they're doing their own things. So flying down, practicing together, and spending a day or two might be what the doctor ordered to get Philadelphia all on the same page. And maybe, just maybe, this is the one that crumbles Panther City. Yeah, that's a good point. So, yeah. so there's a, and that's a four o'clock game Sunday afternoon Eastern. Um, so, uh, more or less, uh, that game's over and uh, we're coming on the air. <laughs> I want to remind everybody that we are here. Uh, every Sunday night at 9 p.m. However, next week we're on at 9. The two following weeks we are on at 11 a.m. Uh, you can blame me. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> one of the weeks I have a plane to catch that evening to get to uh, Prague for the Robeski tournament, and I wanted to make sure I did a show. So bear with me. So next week is 9 p.m. The following two weeks is at 11 a.m. all Eastern. And uh, – Please uh, give a look. We are on Facebook. We are on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We are on Thread. We are on YouTube. Uh, We are all over the place to get you up to date with everything happening everywhere in lacrosse. We have our fingers on the pulse of the situation at all times. We have people at the games, watching the games, um, finding out stuff behind the scenes for you. And uh, we are happy to give it to you. It's our pleasure to do this for you. Uh, please uh, give a look at our YouTube page. More stuff going in there. Uh, again, press conferences, um, more retro games, as well as our library of shows. If there's anything you need to look up or wanted to see, or just see how we've come along over the years. It's all there. So please tell your friends, tell your family, tell the guy down the street. Please subscribe while you're there. And please check back with us uh, a few times a day because the news is always changing. And we have everything up to the minute that we can for you. Anyways, for last words, Muffler Mike. <laughs> uh, obviously, huge, huge, huge week 19 coming up. Uh, <laughs> a lot of Absolutely. playoff implications and uh, just, just excited to see how things turn out. Uh, <laughs> This is the week Mike goes perfect on his pickups and, <laughs> <laughs> and win, wins it all. Yeah, it all. This, is, this is where he's been toying with us. Yeah, uh, he's, he's in the spirit of March Madness. He's the oh, single team goodness. that's coming from the basement yeah. to take us all out. <laughs> <laughs> and Sean, any last words for us? Yeah, I'm going to be there in that back half of that home and home with Saskatchewan and Calgary, and uh, those two teams don't like each other on good day, let alone <laughs> battling for a playoff spot. So I, I can imagine it's going to be a a spirited affair. And me, I'll be in Albany with the, uh, with the rock Albany game. Uh, looking forward to it. Um, my timing should be right. It should be a lot better than uh, um, flying in from San Diego. I should be here at least a, an hour or two before the show. <laughs> I'm driving, you know, it's only a six and a half hour drive. So it's, uh, it's on, it's on my, uh, my time thing. I'm not about delayed flights. <laughs> Maybe hit an extra stoplight or two. That's about it. <laughs> but uh, it, it'll be all good. But, uh, yes, it's, it was a heck of a week. Uh, we want to wish everybody a happy Easter again. Hopefully you got to spend it with your family eating chocolate and colored Easter eggs because bunnies lay eggs. <laughs> well, I guess you can't throw jam on the lawn and go, come on, kids, we're looking for Jesus. 
<laughs> Anyways, I know I'll burn for that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, for uh, for Sean Slatt and Moose Jaw from Muffler Mike over in Connecticut, I'm Gary Groove in Toronto. Uh, wishing you all the very best of weeks. Remember to keep your stick in your hand. And until we meet up again 9 p.m. next Sunday evening, we wish you the best. Until then.